Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having a fantastic day. We are back with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Let's see, last time I defeated what that whatever demon army was over there. But I have no more movement, so let's go ahead and get started. We need to visit the guy over at this inconspicuous camp. Let's do that. And then we'll head over to Heaven's Edge to do Darren's quest. The aged kobold sitting by the small campfire greets you with an amicable gesture. He doesn't reach for his weapon or hiss threateningly. All in all, his behavior is highly unusual for one of his kind. His clothes look quite unusual too. Not many kobolds opt for human clothing, nor do they adorn their possessions with spikes or scales. Greetings, my name is Krennic. I'm all alone here, so you may safely come closer. He speaks smoothly, without the usual kobold hissing. Moving slightly aside, the kobold points to the carcass of a small animal on a stick roasting over the fire. Dinner will be ready soon. Who are you? As I've already mentioned, my name is Krennic, at your service. The kobold offers a short bow, an unusual gesture for one of his kind to make. As a rule, kobolds do not express their respect to anyone other than dragons. I am a traveler and a friend to the crusade. I could be your friend too, if you are tolerant toward kobolds. Krennic utters the word tolerant with shocking ease, as if he is something other than the narrow-minded and savage subterranean beast you expect him to be. Kobolds are infamous for worshiping dragons and despising all other races, and few of them would even understand the concept of tolerance, let alone subscribe to it. Wait, what did you just say? Tolerant? Are you sure you're a kobold? Ah, so you saw through my disguise. Critic tried to mislead you with sweet words and then ambush you. The kobold utters a loud hiss, which then morphs into an amused chuckle. <laughs> of course I'm a kobold. Trust me, you are not the first to be shocked after hearing me speak and realizing that I'm not going to rob or kill you. I'm lucky. If representatives of other races want to be seen as intellectuals or decent conversationalists, they have to read a lot of books, refine their manners, possess a passing knowledge of classical theater, or douse themselves in fine perfume. Whereas in my case, all I have to do is not lunge at you with a spear or hiss every other word. Was it you who left me the note? The kobold shrugs. Of course, who else could it be? I wanted to make sure you were interested in the information I can provide. Not at the bonfire. What are you cooking? Judging by its ears and hind legs, it's a hare. The kobold casts a dubious glance at the animal's mouth, which boasts a set of huge teeth. Or maybe it's a tiger. Depends on your point of view, I suppose. Don't try to be cute, kobold. It doesn't suit you. You ninny. I'm as charming as they come. What do you want from me? I want nothing from you. I'm asking for nothing. I'm simply offering help. I sympathize with your call, so I would like to provide whatever support I can. Time to time. Does that work for you? The kobold stops and looks at you expectantly. How exactly can you help me? With advice, mostly. Throughout my life, I've seen a lot. And a piece of timely advice can be extremely valuable, don't you agree? Of course, if your advisor's a kobold, the merits are not so obvious. But you're in luck. This kobold right here has extensive knowledge on a variety of matters that you may find useful someday. After some thought, he nods toward the campfire. One more thing I have to offer is this hair after it's cooked. How do you know so much about demons? Critic gives you a long and heavy look. I've had some experiences with them. I don't want to go into the details right now. All I'm saying is after a rather short and not even hostile encounter with them, I stopped eating meat for several years. What's the catch? No catch. I am acting for wholly altruistic reasons, but my motives are something I would rather not reveal. Krennic turns his face to you and his wrinkles become more visible in the glow of the fire. 
We just met five minutes ago. Don't you think it's too early to expect complete candor just yet? As I have already told you, I am a friend of the crusade. You can choose to trust me, or you can leave. I offer help and ask for nothing in return, so the question is simple. Will you accept the claw of friendship from a stranger, or is your distrust stronger than your need for help? Thank you. We would appreciate any help. Krennic nods agreeably. Then we have a deal. You won't regret your decision. Just drop by my camp every now and then so we can have a word. Perhaps I'll be able to give you some useful tips. Pulling out a small knife, the traveler cuts, two, cuts off two strips of meat from the roasted air. He throws one into his toothy maw while graciously offering the other to you. A strange animal, for sure, but it seems edible. The energies of the world will mask everything in illusion. Harmless-looking animals try to eat you for dinner. Dangerous paths appear to be straight roads, and your enemies... Sometimes your enemies can look like your friends. Krennic squints and looks deeply into your eyes. Have you been in a situation like this? First, you think a person is your friend and ally. But then the scales fall from your eyes and you realize they are actually your sworn enemy. So you catch this person, you tie them up, then you start thinking, how should you treat them now? Like your enemy? Like your former friend? It's hard to decide. What would you do if one of your friends turned out to be a traitor? Are you talking about someone specific? Wow, your question reeks of paranoia. No, I'm not talking about anyone specific. And I'm not implicating anyone. Cobalt chuckles. <laughs> I'm sorry. It seems my joke has spoiled your sleep for the next few nights. I try to find out what would force the traitor to reveal the truth about their real masters, then do whatever that is. Chaotic. The Cobalt grins. What if you have to threaten them with the death of their family? Or what if you have to grant mercy to someone truly despicable? You don't have to answer. I can tell by your eyes that you're willing to do whatever it takes. And that is correct. If you catch a villain, don't rush to put a noose around their neck. First, learn everything that they have to tell you. As for principles of morality, you'd better stuff them in your deepest pocket and don't batty them about without good reason. I liked your answer. You obviously think with your head and don't just parrot the instructions of others. Then again, if we're discussing traitors, it's fortunate that betrayal it's not reserved for mortals alone. Demons stab each other in the back far more frequently. The rumor is that there are at least two demon stashes within Dresden, filled with arms and supplies that were stolen by Duskerites from Baphomites and vice versa. One of them is near the entrance to the fortress, while another lies by the entrance to the Citadel. Where did you learn that? Gossip? Hearsay? The world is an ocean of chatter, and I am quite a skilled fisherman. Well, that is highly valuable information. Of course it is. I wouldn't waste your time. Cracking his knuckles, Krennic gives you an inquisitive look. I hope that when the time comes for you to make real decisions instead of hypothetical ones, your wisdom won't fail you. Just one bad choice can turn a revered leader into a disgraced pariah. I've seen it happen before. I lived through something like that. My tribe suffered a disaster caused by just one bad choice. Can you even imagine? The cobalt squints sadly, his shoulders slumping a bit. With a sigh, he begins to talk. I don't like telling this story, but it might be useful for you to know it. Perhaps it will serve as a warning. Will you tell me? Krennic clears his throat and starts talking in a sonorous voice that reveals his experience as a bard. I was born into the mighty and proud tribe of the Night Ruby. Our caves were vast, our mine shafts were rich in quartz and metals, and our underground lakes were brimming with fish. And, of course, we had plenty of slaves. The Night Ruby was a model of cobalt success. It was a tight-knit, greedy, and aggressive tribe that intimidated even a few of the nearby human settlements. But there was a flaw underlying our power. Once long ago, our leader of our tribe signed a pact with devils, promising them the soul of every tribe member in exchange for hope and prosperity. 
Since then, every new All Watcher had to agree to the pact, and the power of the tribe grew, as did the number of lost souls. It was like that until our leader, Ermac, came to power. She was a principled and proud elder who didn't want to bend the knee to hell. So she refused to sign the pact, and all kinds of calamities befell our tribe. The tribe was attacked by its neighbors at the devil's instigation. Epidemics broke out. Then our slaves rebelled. They came after their former masters in the dead of night. Our clutches of eggs were ravaged, our altars were desecrated, and our warriors were slain in their burrows. The slaves paid us in full for our cruelty and arrogance. They hunted us, chasing us down through the caves and mine shafts, level by level. When we were finally left alone, we had no idea where we were. All we saw around us was darkness, and lurking in that darkness were bloodthirsty and dangerous predators. After raising his voice dramatically, Krennic suddenly stops. Then he adds with a teasing smile, I think this moment is enough of a cliffhanger to stop here. I'd like to know more about you. I'm flattered, but what's so special about me? I've never accomplished any feats on the battlefield. I don't know any special crafts, and I don't even belong to an exotic species. I don't have the slightest idea what you find so interesting about me. What do you do? I'm a traveling bard, and I can already foresee your next question. How does a bard, who also happens to be a kobold, manage to earn a living? All the civilized races of Avastan know that when you encounter a kobold, the best course of action is to smash its skull, trample it with a horse, then burn the remains just in case. Well, that prejudice that um <laughs> civilized people have regarding my quiet kind is quite understandable. Our infamy as robbers and murderers is more than deserved, so just imagine the spectacle at any tavern when an articulate kobold in decent clothes shows up, offering to share a story or two for a few coins and a mug of ale. I assure you, no matter how big of a deal you are, if we drop by any tavern in Andoran, all eyes will be on me. I am an exotic oddity. Why did you decide to come here to the war wound? I just don't like it when the residents of the lower plains get involved in the lives of mortals. I firmly believe that we don't need any advisors to help us handle our own affairs. And we need overlords, even less. You're different from other kobolds. So you were expecting this stupid kobold to praise dragons and boast about his exploits? Credit grins mischievously. My life has given me many opportunities to communicate with beings from other races, so I found a common language with them. I have no more questions. That's good, because I'm starting to run out of answers. I have a question about demons. You mentioned you know a lot about them. My humble knowledge is at your disposal. What is a demon's main weakness? It's a fact that they are hostages to their own nature, and by their nature, Demons are just a bunch of mad apes, a grotesque priority of ordinary chaos. You don't need to make a bunch of apes angry. You just give them one of them a banana and on the other with a stick. They'll kill each other without your direct intervention. How do you know so much about demons? Krennic gives you a long and heavy look. I've had some experience with them. I don't want to go into details right now. All I'm saying is that after a rather short and not even hostile encounter with them, I stop. We already heard that. Do you know anything about wounds inflicted by demons that first appear, then disappear, and later reappear again? Do I need to resort to platitudes such as the weirdest tricks can be expected from demons, or can I just skip that part? I've never heard anything like you're describing, but new sorts of nasty stuff appear in the world wound every day. However, if we think about it some more, don't you think that this wound doesn't cause enough trouble? To be something the demons did to you on purpose? When you're hit by the magic of the abyss, you know instantly that death is coming your way. And fast. Everything is clear to me now. That's a bold statement. I'd like to hear the stories of your travels. It's a long one. Which part do you like? Um, no, we already heard that. Have you heard about my unusual powers? I've heard you're either extremely lucky or quite the opposite. You survived the massacre in Kennebrez just to spearhead a new suicide mission. On the other hand, you survived then, and most likely, you will survive now. Good luck in this noble endeavor. 
I've got suspicions about you. Here we go. I come in friendship and right away I'm distrusted. So, what is it that's got you worried? Your words are full of mysterious omissions. What can I say? I'm a kobold of many secrets and contradictions. I keep my mouth shut and the rest of the world at arm's length. That's just my nature. I can't help it. I have nothing to say just yet. Well, that's good. I was starting to worry. I can almost hear the news swinging on the gallows already. I don't want to be the first kobold in history to be executed for crimes I didn't commit. I have to go. Good luck. I believe you'll need it. All right. Yet another mystery that I do not completely understand yet. Looking forward to getting more information once the full game is out. This. We'll see if we can take this out right here. Actually, maybe not. No, it makes more sense to deal with the fours sir, first. This is a five, the fours over here. All right, actually, we don't need a rest. We got there's no combat in here, so we could just dive right in. This way. My not so numerous, but nonetheless dearest guests. About a year ago at my last birthday party, I the revered cleric every time we you, my dearest guests will be my assistance in this complicated task. Eat, drink, and indulge yourselves in whatever vices you can. Let nobody leave this house as righteous as they entered it. Live every day like it's your last. After all, nobody knows when that day will arrive, do they? Darren smirts, finishes his wine, and tosses the glass to the ground. How interesting. Inquisitor Leotor whispers in your ear from behind. Did you find anything interesting? Nothing, really. I just took note of a few things. I attempted to find out whether anything unusual or mysterious has happened to the Count over the last 10 years. During my conversations with his acquaintances, two people noted that he never speaks of the revered Nestrin, the priest of Ayamade who was his guardian and tutor. Yet he just mentioned Nestrin in his speech whatever that might mean. You told me that you tried to find out if anything odd had happened to Darren over the last 10 years. Some of his servants complained about strange occurrences in the house, like objects moving by themselves or candles going out. Of course, that can simply be a figment of their imagination. It is also very well known that the Count often invites various spellcasters to entertain them and encourages them to use their magic in mischievous ways. Practically the whole Mendev knows the story about the three drunk wizards and their teleportation race across the roofs of Kenebrez after a party at the Count's house. What I'm trying to say here is that any fluctuations in residual magic at his house are not at all surprising. There was the matter of the abduction, however. A gang of bandits kidnapped the Count hoping for a ransom, but the only reward they got was death. Afterward, the Count told everyone that he had hired the bandits himself as a joke. The other mercenary squad that freed him and executed the bandits was also in his employ. Nobody really wanted to delve too deep into this case after confirming the identities of those wretched cutthroats. But there was one disturbing fact about it all, and I don't mean the Count's bizarre idea of fun. 
the mercenaries who supposedly freed him had also cut off the bandits' heads after they had already killed them. Their heads were cut off? You mean the bandits who attacked Darren? Yes. Perhaps I wouldn't have even noticed this detail had I not visited Heaven's Edge right after the tragic incident. I remember that we also found several headless bodies, both of guests and demons. We thought they had been decapitated during the fight. My companions have been finding severed heads among their belongings recently. Strangely, things like this weren't a problem before Darren joined the party. What? That is an alarming coincidence. Now we have another reason to conduct an investigation. It is crucial that we found out what exactly happened at that tragic feast. What do we need to do, Inquisitor? Now that's the hardest part. I need to dive deep into the past of this place, which requires casting several different spells over some time. It would be very convenient for me if nobody interrupted the process, especially the Count himself. I don't think he remembers my face, but a suspicious stranger casting unknown spells might attract his attention. All in all, what I want you to do is distract the master of the house. Right now he is playing host in the very place I'd like to start with. So how do I distract him? I don't know. Maybe your companions can assist you somehow, or you could take a look around. Perhaps there's something that can help us. I understand. Good luck. Come back to me when the Count leaves. I will tell you everything I managed to find out and maybe even show you something. Okay. The decorative plants are in a miserable state. They've been neglected for many years. Drink, drink. Darren, who has been watching the guests with an unreadable expression, turns his head to you and says in a casual tone, like he's continuing a conversation that was interrupted, I have always considered myself an estate, not a hero. When doomsday comes, I thought I'd pour myself a glass of hundred-year-old wine, sit in the front row, and just watch the world burn. Playing the violin was also an option. Now I'll be damned if I know how I ended up in the Fifth Crusade. How did I become the companion of a hero chosen by I Am A Day? It was our destiny to end up together. Darren snorts and averts his eyes for a moment. Oh, do go on. Um, let's see. Tell me more about Heaven's Edge. This estate was once a truly beautiful site with its lush gardens and placid ponds. Darren smiles briefly. It is a genuine smile, quite different from his usual half smirk. The house itself is not that large, however. This land was part of the border region even before the world wound, so my ancestors took that into account when laying the foundations. The larger the mansion, the easier it is to defend. The harder it is to defend, rather, sorry. I'd gladly give you a tour, but I'm afraid there's not much to see here. I didn't have much time, so my servants only managed to clean up this yard, the great hall, and a couple of rooms. There's nothing interesting about them, except perhaps the magical firefighting system powered by water elementals. I'm not sure it's still functional though. Spill wine on Darren's suit. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Hmm, and did you also not mean to ruin a suit that costs more than a thoroughbred? Ah, don't fret. I have a spare. Just you wait. When I return, I shall look even more stunning. Excellent. I see that you did your part, Commander. Thank you. Now get ready to watch and listen closely. I will unravel the past of this place and try to show you whatever I find. The hum of voices, laughter, and music fills your mind. Then the visions come. Fragmented and hazy at first, they eventually coalesce to reveal a single face. It is a woman of stunning beauty, heavenly beauty, and her delicate features instantly tell you who she is. The family resemblance to Darren is obvious. My dear guest, the Lady of Heaven's Edge welcomes all of you today. I hope this day is as bright for you as it is for me, because on this day, my only precious, sometimes arrogant, but utterly beloved child was born. A child is usually a reflection of their parents and caretakers. Countess, will you allow the humble tutor of this young man to address the guests and the man of the hour as well? 
a new face appears. It is a handsome old man with a strong, dignified posture and a voice that emanates power. Can't we have just one day without your sermons? It's my birthday, after all. Ten years ago, the young Darren had an utterly angelic appearance. His table manners and expression lacked the dignity of a true angel, however. Da, I'm sure the revered Nestrin only wanted to hug you and offer you his best wishes on your birthday. W wait, what? What's that noise? The shrill laughter rings in your ears and reverberates in the base of your skull. In the vision, a little two appears before the guest of the estate and gives them an exaggerated, scornful bow. <laughs> the sorceress of evil has come to your celebration, mortals. Did you prepare a treat for me too? Now, do you, what do you want, Spawn of the Abyss? I've already done everything I wanted to. Hey, you dodoring cleric, look around. Don't you notice anything odd? The plague is in your wine, in your food, in the air around you, in your blood. Soon you will all die. Pray to your pathetic goddess and call up on your healing powers all you want. But they're not going to help you. Nothing will help you. I will give you a chance to see it for yourselves. And when I return, the grave realization will have already sunk its teeth into your throats. Oh, how I love watching mortals in their final desperate hours. The demon finishes her speech when an air kissed Darren, making him freeze in horror and disappears. Leotor shakes his head and slowly exhales, rubbing his temples. The first appearance of the disease in the Lilitu, one of the many sisters of the accursed Monago. So far, everything I've seen matches the official version of events. Who are the people in the vision? Countess Selena Arende was Darren's mother and one of the most beautiful women in the history of Mendev. She was, at, she was an Asimir, just like her son. The old man is the esteemed cleric Nestrin, our Count's guardian and tutor. He was well known for his unfaltering faith and iron will. I was only passing acquaintances with him, so I can't tell you anything more than that. I didn't recognize the others, but Darren told me that the first victims of the disease were his second cousin and the cousin's wife, hailing from the eastern border. Surely the cleric could have done something. I can't say for certain, but I believe there was nothing he could have done. Magical diseases are already difficult enough to cure, and the plague struck very fast indeed. Now we must find out what happened next. What now? I can sense the aftershocks of a very strong outburst of emotions and memories somewhere in the west ring of the house. Something must have happened in one of the rooms, so please check if anyone is in there and distract them if need be. Okay. As you can already see, Darren's quest, very, very interesting. Never my legs carry me. Black. Right. Here. Nothing out there though. What was that? Crooked paw. Oh man. I failed a, a perception check. Oh well. Cold iron. Nothing there. Forwards! No, no, backwards. Backwards! Long, long list of diamond dust. Like I said before, diamond dust is plentiful. Dinosaur bones, on the other hand? Yeesh. Hold on to those. Countess Elena Nevia Dara Arende with her infant son, Darren. Unlike the typical aristocratic portraits, this one depicts a young mother having fun with her child on a garden swing. Trail me. Darren arches a brow at you, but he doesn't seem to be disturbed in the slightest by your entrance. He's not trying to cover up or get dressed any faster. <laughs> Commander. I assume that you have an urgent matter that requires my attention. What is this room? Darren casts a look around the room as if he had never seen it before, then shrugs carelessly. Just a random room. I told my servants to make some rooms ready. This is one of the rooms they chose. 
I am absolutely confident that you won't be able to persuade Soseo to draw a portrait of you. A new portrait, that is. That sounds like a fine idea. Our cleric will surely turn down a direct request, but if I tell him that we can sell the portrait at a charity auction, why have I never before thought of selling my new portraits at a charity auction? It will cause a huge scandal, but it will also be for a good cause. This will give those godfathers something to complain about. You've given me a brilliant idea. I see that you were able to do as I asked. Prepare yourself. This vision might be rather difficult to watch. <laughs> Young Darren stands motionless by the Countess's bed. His face is pale with fear for good reason. His mother's heavenly beauty is gone. Her smile, once beaming with vitality and happiness, looks more like the grimace of a corpse. Only her golden hair still glows, a sad reminder of the healthy young woman she was just a few hours ago. Mother, can you hear me, mother? Da, my boy, how did you get here? The Countess's voice is fading. Don't come any closer. I, this disease. Mother, listen. The revered Nestrin has sealed the gates. He says that he won't let anyone leave the estate. If the plague reaches the larger settlements, nobody will be able to stop it. He claims this is why the demons attacked us in the first place. They knew that we would call upon the strongest clerics to heal us, and those clerics would catch the disease and die as well. The fat baron and his family tried to escape, but three armed paladins barred their way and said they would not let them go. Mother, we need help. Ketterbrus is full of clerics, wizards, and demons, no what else. They might know how to stop it. We need to get there as soon as possible. We must obey the revered Nestrin. We are the lords of Mendev, and we must protect our people. If the plague, if it reaches Ketterbrus, thousands of innocent people will die. I don't care about any innocence. Darren's voice rises to a shout. You're ill, mother. You, you, you're dying. You must tell them to open the gates and take you to Kenebras. They won't listen to me, but you are the lady of the estate. They can't refuse you. I, I can't. I must. Please leave, my dears. Don't lose hope. You can still. A convulsion overtakes the Countess's body. Her last words are swallowed by a long, guttural groan. Leotor warily rubs his temples, but his face is unreadable. Now I have an answer to one of my many questions. Nobody went to Kenebris in search of help because the revered Nestrin didn't let them. He valued the safety of the city more than the lives of his flock at the estate. What a difficult choice it must have been. Was there really no other choice? Who can say now? They could have sent one of the paladins to bring help from Kenebris, assuming that the Knight of God was immune to the disease. Perhaps Nestrin thought he might need them to maintain order, or maybe he understood that the demons would not allow anyone to leave anyway. Or maybe the plague was so strong that it could mow down even the most righteous warriors. We will never know if any of these hypotheses are true. Leotor rubs his chin thoughtfully. I have never been in the revered Nestor's position, but I know the price of difficult decisions, especially those that you have to make quickly. I have no right to judge them, but we must continue our investigation. The next site I'd like to examine is the Great Hall. That is where we found the remains of Nestrin and the demons. I assume that he killed them in a confrontation, but we must make sure of that. Please help me clear the area so that I can study it. What's in wait for me there? No, 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 no. Stop trying to talk me into this. You have neither heart nor conscience, Darren. 
Even the noble idea of charity becomes a farce when you touch it. I don't think these so-called innocents will suffer from knowing that their money and medicine came from my sinful silhouette. table okay there's a feverish gleam to darren's eyes owing to either tipsiness or some overabundance over emotion oh there as the day is the fourth that rotter social refused to sketch me in the new for charity but it didn't upset me too much the faces he made while i was explaining the idea to him were well worth it he looked very much like a pious matron being confronted with a talking male organ, one that was two foot long and being held aloft by a pair of golden angel wings. How are you enjoying my party? Are you having a good time? Yeah, I'm having the time of my life. At least someone here is having fun. Fine, let's change the subject. I thought the unique ambiance of Heaven's Edge and the fact that we're on the very border with the war wound would make this celebration special. I thought the past would resurface and make itself known. Darren smirks bitterly. Well, it seems even ghosts don't wish to attend my parties anymore. What can we do to liven up the evening? You know what I think? I think it's time for a drinking contest. Ah, yes. The tried and trusted method of salvaging a dull party. Or salvaging anything, actually. I am ready. Well, who's my competition? So this is weird. I don't know what decides this. Usually I have Sila as an option. And I don't know if maybe you need to talk to her before you have this conversation more or if it's about how often she's been in your party so you're closer to her. I'm not sure, but sometimes it just doesn't come up. It's weird. Me, of course. What's this? The commander himself, the hero of Canabras, the chosen one, is challenging me to a drinking contest? I'm in. Let's drink until one of us falls unconscious or begs for mercy. That was just a little warm up, I say. Up for more? Let's continue. I assume your constitution score is what decides how much liquor you can stand. That's the way it usually works in these games. Whoa, are we done here? Or are you ready for another round? Let's continue. My grandfather, or maybe my great grandmother, put this bottle in the family cellar. And it allowed the Sihon of an illustrious line to save face and finish in a tie. Darren looks a bit unsteady on his feet. I don't feel very well. H hey, everyone, let's go back outside. I ick, need to get some fresh air in my, in my lungs. Here we are again, Commander. Leotor looks grim, but focused. So let us take another glimpse into the past. A ripple of laughter flows through the hall. It begins as a sweet, charming chuckle, but then turns into a rasping cackle that makes Darren huddle even deeper into his corner. Why are you running from me, my sweet prince? Come on, let me touch you. I'll give you the booming voice of an old man dressed in Iron Madean robes shakes the walls of the hall. Get away from him, demon. Let the boy go. By the blade of the inheritor, you touch him only over my dead body. You are pathetic, old cleric. Are you the guardian of this charming little prince? Well, you guarded him in vain. The disease is already circulating in his blood, and soon he will rot before your very eyes. You won't be able to help him, and I, I can at least make sure his death is beautiful, clean, and sweet. The demoness turns her eyeless face to Darren 
and licks her lips. A coarse laugh escapes the young man's throat. <laughs> we'll see about that. Leotor turns toward you in astonishment. Droplets of sweat glisten on his temples. Something is wrong, Commander. My spells are not working as expected. It's as if some kind of a supernatural explosion occurred here 10 years ago, blending everything together. The magical auras, the emotions, the memories. I, I will try again to read it. Could he be dangerous? I cannot say for certain, but it is unlikely. The past is in the past and no one can travel through time except for some uniquely powerful entities like Aeons or perhaps the eldest of the first world. Even though the past of this place is horrible, it poses no threat to us in the present. Please continue. Just give me a moment to focus. I will try to channel my visions and feelings to you as accurately as possible. Darren, my boy, what is going on? Leotor's muscle, muscular shoulders suddenly begin to shake. The vision he is channeling does not change, but you feel something enormous and chilling silently infiltrate the reality around you. The presence of this nameless being becomes almost palpable. Some alien entity is talking to him. Hurry, old cleric, stop him right now. Do you really want to see what happens when... Save me. Can you save me? The presence thickens into something more tangible. The entity is silent, but you feel your blood pulsing in your temple, and each beat brings a new image, or rather, a new notion. Help brings a feeling of relief and safety. Exchange makes the pulse stronger, more demanding. Gate and secret come immediately after. The images become heavier, almost visible. Secret, keep the secret. Otherwise, death, 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 death. The gruesome images whirl through your mind, filling it with pain and fear. And then it all starts again. Help, exchange, secret, death. Nestrin stretches out his shaking hand, suddenly looking like a doddering old man instead of a mighty cleric imbued with holy power. Darren, wait! The thing you're about to let loose is even worse than these demons! Darren's body is quivering like a taut bowstring. His eyes dart from the cleric to the demoness, who is frantically casting protective spells. Demons! Saints! I'm so fed up with all of you! Burn! Leotor opens his eyes with a groan, then gets back to his feet. His legs are wobbly. His eyebrow is cut, but he seems not to notice. Sincere sorrow is written on his face, as well as a strong hint of horror. What a misfortune. No, what a disaster. Everything is far worse than I imagined. Are you all right? The strain, the emotions, they overwhelmed me and made me faint like an agitated youngster. It is nothing, really. I will not be able to cast any spells for the rest of the day, but aside from that, I'm fine. Do you understand now what happened 10 years ago? The Inquisitor slowly exhales through clenched teeth and says in a low voice, still massaging his temples, yes and no. Damn it, my thoughts are astray. I will try to explain everything to you in full detail. Many living things are capable of performing the most extraordinary feats good or bad, when a deadly threat looms over them. Ten years ago, the young Count found himself cornered in every sense of the word, and he allowed some alien entity to intercede for him. It frightens me that all my experience as an Inquisitor is completely useless in this case. It does not resemble anything I've ever heard or read about. This entity, I think I will call it the Other, possesses uncanny power. It was capable of instantly killing three greater demons, a mighty cleric, and a host of other mortals. You saw everything yourself. What's even worse is that this entity, this other, it is still here. Leotor takes a long pause. His gaze is drawn to the chamber where all the guests are laughing and dancing. Darren's eloquent voice rises above the music for a moment. He's asking someone to bring more wine and add more logs to the fire. I don't know what exactly this creature is, 
but I know what it did to the Count. It turned him into a living gateway. The other is not inside the Count's body. It is not directly controlling his mind. That's why there are no obvious signs of possession, but it is looking through his eyes. It treats him like a window into our world and it can instantly step through it to wreak have whatever havoc it desires. Does Darren know anything about all this? Yes, of course he does. Did you hear what the other tried to convey to us? Help in exchange for a secret, death. Death to those who know the truth. It wants to have an opportunity to use the count as a gateway without anyone knowing. This is what made Darren deny that he remembered anything about the conclusion of the events at Heaven's Edge. What might the other want? This is the strange thing about it all. It came to this world 10 years ago and it's still here, right? All this time, it has been watching us through the eyes of the Count. Had it, for instance, wanted to kill Her Majesty the Queen, it would have had plenty of opportunities to do so. The Count can get close to practically every influential figure in Mendev, but the other refuses to act, or its interests lie in some other spear. Did the other kill everyone then? The disease was not to blame? Not everyone, just Nestor and his paladins and the few remaining guests. Damn it. I know that it was the work of a mysterious, omnipotent entity, but it still stings. I was here 10 years ago, and I didn't check everything personally and those who did fail to sense that something was wrong. Could the other be the reason why my companions keep finding severed heads among their belongings back in Canebras? Seems very likely. I am almost certain you are right. People tend to lose their heads when they get too close to counter Rende anyway. Ha! Huh. I do apologize, that was inappropriate. Perhaps your gruesome findings are the result of some cultists who tried to kidnap the Count during the Canebras slaughter? Or perhaps they provoke the other in some other way. We have to do something. Yes, now I understand Father Nestrin perfectly. I must make a crucial decision despite a dearth of information. The Inquisitor falls silent for a while. Then he looks you right in the eye. Commander, first and foremost, I must apologize to you. Second, I must ask you to keep this secret. What are you sorry for? I apologize for dragging you into this mess. You see, the other, an entity of immense power, stated very clearly that it would kill anyone who found out the truth, anyone who knows that the Count is actually its living gateway. I suppose this secret is currently known to three people on Galorian, you, me, and Count Darren. And that means, Leotor gives you a crooked smirk and shrugs. Why should I keep it a secret? As soon as the Count finds out we know his secret, the other will understand it as well. We do not know what it is and what exactly is the scope of his powers, but we do know that it would dispose of anyone who might reveal its existence. I've made a decision, Leotor says gravely. I will not tell anyone about the discovery we just made, not even the Queen or my superiors. Instead, I will immediately go to Neuroscience and sift through all the archives of the Inquisition in order to find out what exactly we are dealing with and how it could possibly be defeated. I may also make some cautious inquiries in other places, such as Absalom. Still, I will not reveal the truth until I've found at least some reliable information. I'm asking you to do the same. Specifically, do not say a single word about our investigation to the Count himself. So you want me to leave the crusade while carrying a bomb that may explode at any moment? I'm afraid that you won't be able to hide from the consequences when this bomb does explode. It is up to you to decide, though. What are you going to do with Darren himself? At the very least, he is guilty of letting the other enter our world. Right now, I'm a lot more concerned about the other, but when we find a way to get rid of this entity, the Count will have to stand trial. Many things about this case are still unclear, including the extent of his guilt. Did he call upon the other by himself? Or did he simply answer its call? Could he refuse its offer? Or would it have led to his immediate death? Every detail is important and every testimony needs solid proof. That is the difference between righteous justice and blind vengeance. Fine, I will keep it secret. 
Leotor lets out a sigh of relief. Whew. You made the right choice. I recommend that you go back to the guests and spend the rest of the evening as you please. Anything else might raise suspicions. I must leave immediately in search of the knowledge we all need so desperately. Farewell, Commander. May the light of Iamadei guide your path, and Leotor Hawkblade will try to keep your path to try and clear of any unwanted guest. Fascinating. All right, utterly fascinating. Can't wait to see a conclusion for that. The door is sealed and looks like it hasn't been opened in a very long time. You get a couple of more hints about, about continuing this quest, but it is not possible in the beta to resolve it. I don't know if my opinion matters to you at all, but you're the very best guest I could ever wish for. No, so backwards. I have no idea what's going on here and would love, 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 love to find out. All right, now let's continue on. Okay, can't do anything with that yet. No recruits available. Actually, I need a rest. Dun, 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 dun. Hypothesis. The party's sexual interest in me surged when it became known that I have a kid soon. I'm going to survey my comrades in order to confirm my hypothesis. Estimir Board, what is it about foxes you find sexually appealing? Be precise. Wow. Wow. So you do not even consider the possibility that I do not find. Oh, dash it all. The tail, obviously. <laughs> that is a perfect question for Derek. Absolutely perfect. What? Still? There we go. Okay. Still can't do those. Still don't have good. Oh, I got a free search. Hey, ooh. 21. Nope, that's two. What is the problem? Here we go. All right. Now this is a level four. That's a level four, but you got to go through. Oh no, we can actually go straight to that. And then this is level seven all the way down here. Okay, cool. All right. Fight the battle. Disappear. For real. Ooh. There we go. I was about to say. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um. Right, they can do serious damage to him, whereas they can only do limited damage to the gargoyle. Oh crap, there's two of these these jokers? Alright. Um No, it will allow you to take that out. So this is the one I should go for. Excellent. Yep, saw that coming. Oh, that's right. That means they both of them have to go melee on him, though. 
God dog it, I forgot about that. Forgot about that. Whoops, here. Alright. No choice. Oh nice. Not not terrible damage. Oh, but they paralyzed him. What a bunch God dog it. Okay. And I got no way to unparalyze him, right? Oh, actually, he's doing more damage. Yeah, dog it. Not doing this right all the way around, but so, but whatever. There we go. It is what it is. All right. Sooner or later, you're going to get over what you're doing. Hey, please work. Thank you. There we go. All right. got everybody back I will take it very nice having driven out the monsters the Crusaders discovered that which had drawn their attention graves during their retreat from the lost chapel its last defenders stopped here to bury their com comrades whose wounds were too severe the clerics can sense the gods blessing on the ground where their faithful warriors were laid to rest daily income increased energy points Times one. Excellent. Now, let's go ahead and get that. Pick up those reinforcements. Skip a day because I want. Get this done now. Doom, doom. Boom. Combine. Let's get some more. Now we're at six. Excellent. Skip another day. Fifteen two two. Wait a minute. What? No. Why are they saying I caught a beat down? <laughs> hey, hey. Come on now. Oh well. Uh. You know what? I need to organize them so that they're all together, so that these stratagems work a little bit better. They gain speed. Negative two penalty to AC. They don't really need that. All allies on one foot burst. Sure, ignore damage. Shouldn't it be all allies? It's weird. Okay, whatever. Um, who do I want taken care of the most? Yeah, I guess I'll take you out. Oh, look at you. Coming all nice and close for us. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, sure. And four. There we go. Five. That's fine. Um. 
You're, you're uh, vulnerable to that, right? A little bit. That was six. How much do you? How much damage do you take? That was five. More than likely, that I know it could do more. That's fine. There you go. You're fit. You're sensitive to physical damage. Yeah. There we go. Stop. All right. Um. Yeah. You could probably really blow him up, right? What two? What in the hell? And now three. Did he turn on something? Weird. All right, whatever. Done. And now, yeah, you're not, you are not resisted to a damn mace in your face. All right. All right, all right, all right. Bam. Bam. You move up. And there we go. That that looks much better. No losses. We ain't taking no L's out here. This old Sikorian graveyard was ravaged by a group of flesh-eating ghouls. They mangled the corpses or turned them into walking dead. But the valuable items buried in the graves proved to be of no interest to them. Mm -hmm. Save that. That's just right here. Nope, we're gonna have to fight this. Boom, boom, boom. All right. And what's the best? That's you, that's you. Hmm. I guess this? Yeah, cool. Sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Come on. I hate when they do that. <sighs> Y'all notice that that Hell Knight did not attack at all, right? So annoying. But at least it just skipped his turn this time. Yeah, poison a little bit. Poison a little bit. Poison a little bit. All right. Excellent. And you might as well just attack who's right in front of you. Oof. More problems. Um, you're sensitive to this, right? Yeah, a little bit. There we go. That's fine. You could do that. Oh, oh, 30. 32. Hmm. Nobody likes what's happening. All right. Um, yeah. Stick with that. More for you. Yeah, I definitely need to pick up a cure wound at some point. Nine. Nope. Got to take you out. Excellent. All right. You can't take much more, but you should be finished with this round, right? Hmm, 16 is a lot. Oh, he gets double. Oh, but he didn't take off anything. Oh, well. There we go. Hey, still took you out. Okay, cool. Let's hope it doesn't freeze. Good enough. I don't know why that thing just stays back here and keeps turning on defensive stuff. That's super weird, but whatever. And do you again. Lovely. The enemy, which threatened to strike at the rear of the Crusade army, was defeated. The Crusaders can approach Dresden with no need to watch for an attack from the rear. Daily income increased. Finance points times 100. All right. Dealt with that. Nope. Skip another day. Bing, 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 bing. All them days I skipped, still can't get a new army. So this is why I mentioned in one of my earlier build videos, I feel like this early part is not quite 
balance properly because it feels a little grindy, you know? You've gotta, you've gotta fake it, basically. I, I have to have my people waiting around and just keep skipping days because they're clearly not ready for this. Right, attack. All right, um, guess it doesn't matter. Decent, even better. I did not appreciate that at all. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Um, you're kind of a threat, so I don't like the way nobody's standing in front of you. There we go. Okay. Oh, and look at you all, all running up in a row. Bring him around. Guess if <laughs> I threw his shield at that. You turned all that little shield like it was really going to help you, bruh. That shield don't mean nothing to us. You ain't got to make it easy for us. We'll still come get you regardless. No losses. Okay. Excellent. The Crusaders took over the ruins of Sikorian. Oh, the Crusaders took over the ruins of a Sikorian settlement and put to the sword all the demons defending it. Scouts have reported a sinister looking lair nearby, which is why we were waiting over here. Ooh, there's a level seven over here. That's rough. Um, I guess we're supposed to be ready to take on seven. We're, we're level six, so we're only a step away. Maybe, kind of, sort of. Anyway, let's do one more of these. Bing, din, 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 din. All right. I like the stratagems, as you all can see. Um, Who is that middle guy? The middle guy is strength. So I think he's more susceptible to arrows, but I think he's the bigger issue. So we'll deal with you first, because those little throwing hammers he could do are no joke. Yeah, sure, move up. Hmm, I could, but no. Hey, this I like. There we go, there we go. How dare you. All right, he's more susceptible to arrows, so we'll do that. Bam, and a little bit of this. Bam. Jerk off. And you can only hit him, so go ahead and hit him. And then can, you don't have enough to finish him off more than likely. Oh, 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 oh. Well, by all means, go ahead and shock me. Ooh, a little bit of high room morale over there. Excellent. Felt like we're on a roll, let's attack again. Yep. Almost. Ooh, almost again. There we go. Two and five. We're good. Excellent. Keepers Canyon used to be an important relay point for the river traffic between Dresden and Canabras. Now this small but once thriving port town lies in ruins, but a sturdy harbor may still come in handy when the sh supply ships from Mendev arrive. Daily income increased. Material points times five. And looks like we also have a level up. So, combat morale. Ooh, maximum size. Or the infirmary. And a few units can act out of turn. This number of units is equal to the level of this feat. So we're guaranteed to get tactician, level one. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size of the army. Because I really like having a bunch of different units. And I can pull units from... So actually then, makes sense to pull these guys up. Because I could throw one of them into what I'm doing. So make your way up here. And I'll combine with you when I get a chance.
Oh crap, I shouldn't have done this. Nope. Okay. I was about to say, I forgot when you combine, it takes away the movement speed, right? I'm not interested in that right now. Fifteen, three, twenty-three, thirty footmen. No, we're not interested in losing thirty footmen. No, thank you. So we'll go ahead and make this happen. Holy crap, they're all on horses. Interesting. And that only did one. But he gets a second go at it. Still only one, but hey. Oh wait, he has a shield. Do the rest of them have shields? Oh, seems like some of them don't have shields. I shouldn't have. Oh well, whatever, whatever, whatever. You. Ah, you're so much lower than the other ones. Yeah, it makes me want to just go ahead and take a shot. How do you do on these? Much better. Gots to, gots to pay attention. Seriously, is it frozen on the enemy's turn now? So it can also freeze if the enemy is on horseback? Ugh. That's super irritating. Oh my. Wow. That's irritating, y'all. All right, let's give it another go round. Okay. Um. So attack the one that is not have a shield. There we go. Well, hey, you get a uh, high morale again. There you go. And you stick with him. Excellent. Ooh, 10. 10. Okay. And you. Yeah, might as well kill you. Okay, well, hey, at least it ends the turn, doesn't freeze the whole damn game. Seriously? <sighs> Seriously? How do I even avoid that? It's based on what the enemy does. So I have no idea how I even... Pressing space bar doesn't do anything. Pressing escape doesn't do anything. Pressing I to go into inventory doesn't do anything. <sighs> All right. I will figure out how to get... If there's a way for me to still do this battle, but I don't want to see y'all have to watch me repeat this over and over again. I appreciate all of you in watching the playthrough today. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.